April 20th uh, Planning Commission meeting into an order. Uh, McKenna, would you call the roll, please? Sir, Commissioner Graham. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Shaw. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Starks. Yes. Commissioner Vitale. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volker. Yes, ma'am. And Chair Warren. Yes, ma'am. Commissioners, you have uh, the minutes of our March 16th uh, meeting in your packet. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we call for a motion, please. So moved. Second. Chair Volker. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Graham. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Shaw. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Starks. Yes. Commissioner Vitale. Yes, ma'am. And Chair Warren. Yes, ma'am. Commissioners, you have the uh, uh, subdivision site development plans in your packet. Are there any questions? All right, hearing none, we have no old business. Uh, Mr. Moore, we are now in, into our public hearing. For the record to include tonight all statutory and regulatory provisions, the commission's entire file for each application and the qualifications of staff witnesses Please also administer the oath to those witnesses. Gulf swear to tell the truth. Thank you very much. Our first item tonight is uh, <clears throat> 2023 uh, 20, 2023-02 DP Cedar Pines LLC care of Rodney Rogers has filed an application to amend the general development plan, development plan conditions for 57.22 acres located at Cedar Point subdivision at the intersection of Plum Springs Road and Cedrus Avenue, Calgary Way with the general development plan. Jenny. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We had a pre-application meeting for the property highlighted in yellow in March of this year, just a small typo. The current zoning of the property is RS1D. Current land use is both vacant and single family residential. And then the future land use designation is low density residential. To reiterate the request, that site plan is there for your all's reference. The applicants are proposing to amend the development plan for 57.22 acres located in the Cedar Point subdivision. The main purpose of the application is to amend the restrictions on minimum lot width for 14 of the proposed lots. There is just one point under the development history. Uh, the development was rezoned to RS1D back in 2021. And looking down to the staff recommendation, the proposal does comply with the majority of the criteria assessed in the review process, remains consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan, and is generally compatible with the surrounding area. And with that, staff recommend approval pending the public hearing testimony and discussion tonight. That's all that I have, but I'm happy to answer your all's questions. Thank you, Jenny. Commissioners, any questions? Okay, hearing none, thank you. Is the applicant here? Any comments they would like to make? Any comments, Mr. Rogers? Rodney Rogers, 191 Windmere Court, and I swear to tell the truth. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Any comments you would like to make? I just uh, appreciate your all's consideration of this. It was uh, an oversight on our part. Uh, we intended to initially discuss having a minimum lot width of 65 foot even though we did go for the RS1D zoning and through the design process, somehow uh, I think 10 or 11 of the lots wound up being 61.5 or 61 foot wide. And you know we're just here to say we're sorry and uh, move forward. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Uh, commissioners, any questions for Mr. Rogers? So Rodney, this might be something for your for your engineer. Uh, is there? Did, did you did you sp stip stipulate 65 feet in the uh, DPCs earlier? Or? There was a a very preliminary uh, sheet that had a note on it that minimum lot width would be 65 feet. I see. Okay. Yeah. I see. It was it was it was a note. Um, was it was not in recorded in the uh, the, uh, the development plan conditions, it was never specified in them. It was just this note on the plan. Was it? Yeah. Put, put the, I, what'd you say, Rachel? No, but it here, put your microphone down. It was recorded as a part of the original development part plan of the DPC. conditions. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah because yeah. Um, it's actually on page three, uh, development plan condition one, the previous statement said that the location and orientation uh, of, sorry, the location and orientation of internal streets and lots shall substantially conform to the concept plan attached as exhibit A, an original exhibit A called out that minimum lot width at 65 feet. So we're still within the, the, the number of lots uh, uh, maximum then, correct? And change the number of lots, and it is zoned RS1D, which you can go to 50 foot minimum. So we're, we're still exceeding the minimum of RS1C. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Rogers. You. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions before you all sit down? Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone here in the audience tonight that has questions or opposition to this request? Okay. Hearing none, commissioners call for a motion, please. Make the motion to approve the proposed, proposed general development plan amendment docket number 2023-02-DP. Based on the testimony and documents presented in this public hearing, the proposed general development plan is amendment is consistent with the adopted focus 2030 comprehensive plan as demonstrated by its compliance with the objectives and action items presented in the staff report further i also find that there have been major changes of economic physical and social nature within the area of the property in question i request the fact findings of the facts and recommendations include a summary of evidence and testimony presented by the witness at the public hearing commissioner volker yes ma'am commissioner graham yes ma'am commissioner shaw Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Starks? Yes. Commissioner Vitale? Yes, ma'am. And Chair Warren? Yes, ma'am. The motion is approved and is a, a planning zoning final action. Our next item tonight is 2023-19 Z County. Philip Moore and Mary Beth Moore Collins have filed an application to rezone a portion of a tract of land containing approximately one acre located at 165 Gherkin Road from Ag to RE Residential State with a general development plan. Jenny? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We had a pre-application meeting in February of this year for the property outlined in yellow. The current zoning of the property is ag, the current land use is agriculture, and then the future land use designation is low density residential. There is their uh, preliminary site plan uh, for your all's reference. The applicants are proposing to rezone a portion of the property at 156 Skirkin from ag to residential estate in order to sub subdivide the existing home and accessory structures onto a smaller single family residential lot. Um, just a small note under property history, the parent track has come before you all for different uh, subdivisions, both in 2020 and then uh, in 2022 as well. Looking down to the staff recommendation, the proposal complies with the majority of the criteria assessed in the review process and is generally compatible with the surrounding area. And with that, staff recommendation is for approval, pending any public hearing testimony and discussion tonight. That's all that I've had, I have, but I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Commissioners, any questions? All right, thank you. Is the applicant here? Any comments they would like to make? Yes, sir, if you tell you, state your name and address. Phil Moore, 297 Gherkin Road, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, the property we're referring to is at 165 Gherkin Road. There have been five generations of our family that have resided there. And what we're doing in requesting this uh, particular zone change is to make certain that that home is there and utilized by a family member. And hopefully for future generations, it will be there and do so also. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Okay. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Moore? Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience tonight has a question or opposition to this request? Hearing none, we call for a motion, please. I make the motion to approve the proposed zoning map amendment together with and condition upon the general development plan, docket number 2023-19Z County. Based upon the testimony and documents presented in this public hearing, the proposed zoning map amendment is consistent with the adopted Focus 2030 Comprehensive Plan as demonstrated by its compliance with the objectives and actions items presented in the staff report. Therefore, the proposed zoning map amendment is in agreement with the adopted Comprehensive Plan. Further, I request that this motion include the summary of evidence and testimony presented by the witnesses at this public hearing. Second. Chair Starks. 
Yes. Commissioner Vitale. Yes, Commissioner Volker. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Graham. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Shaw. Yes, ma'am. And Chair Warren. Yes, ma'am. The motion is approved and goes to Warren County Physical Court for final approval. Our next item tonight is 2020, 2023 20ZBG South, South Side Development LLC, care of Barrett Hammer, the applicant, and Stan Dar and Brian Marr, the property owner property owners have filed an application to rezone tracts of land containing approximately 5.88 acres located at 0721 and 741 Plano Road from AG RM4 multifamily residential and highway business to RM3 townhouse multifamily residential with the general development plan. Ms. Hurt. Thank you, Chair Warren. We had a pre-application meeting back in January for the properties you just referenced outlined in yellow and located on Plano Road. The current zoning is AG, RM4, and HB, and the RM4 and HB areas were designated back in 2019 with a previous rezoning application that came before you all. The current land use is vacant and single family, and the future land use designation is mixed use commercial. The summary of request uh, outlines the proposal uh, at the top of page one, and the applicants are proposing to rezone roughly 5.8 acres from AG, RM4, and HB to RM3 in order con to construct a maximum of 85 multifamily units. Looking at compatibility with the comprehensive plan, staff found the application to be generally compatible and in compliance with the applicable review criteria in the comprehensive plan and also uh, the Plano focal point plan. And so for that reason, our staff recommendation is for approval, pending public hearing testimony and discussion this evening. That is all I have, but I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you, Ms. Hurt. Uh, commissioners, any questions? Is this under single management? I believe so. Let's check the development plan conditions. Looking at. I may be thinking of one of the other applications tonight. Let's see. They actually don't specify that in the DPCs. So that may be a question for the applicant. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Commissioners, any other questions? All right, thank you, Mr. Graham. Thank you, Rachel. Is the applicant here or their representative uh, to? Uh, uh, would, you, would you mind answering? Uh, come on up here, Kevin. Would you mind answer, answering Mr. Graham's uh, question, please? My name's Kevin Brooks, 1649 Chestnut Street. I swear to tell the truth. Thank you. Um, Mr. Graham, these properties can be uh, potentially divided into condo units and sold. So a commitment for single management doesn't work. Evan, what about, are all the colors and everything going to be consistent? So, so I guess my question is, are they going to sell off lots? And, no. Okay. So you, well, the plan is that we will develop all of it. So are you are y'all okay? All right. We would sell units. We will we wouldn't sell lots. Okay. So it, it won't initially be subdivided, but it will be developed and constructed so that we could we could turn into so individual units and sell them. Barrett, will y'all be okay with consistent colors? Like one Barrett, yeah, hey Barrett, yeah. come up yeah. to the microphone, please. So um, on his way up, something like um, the units will all be developed with a consistent. Uh, yeah, we've tried one, to do that. One, in the past. one roof color, one, one siding. I mean, yeah. I, I think the, the concern, the only concern I would have here is just making sure it looks like a complex. And I don't have, we don't have seven different things out there. Barrett, come up here to the mic, please. Barrett Hammer, 745 Carter Sims Road, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Thank you. Um, I swear to tell the truth. I swear to tell the truth. Thank you. So, so could we put it in there where, where it will all look uniform? Absolutely. That's, that's what and I I'm want. I'm sure that's your plan. Yeah, that's what I but, want. And as far as the maintenance of the grounds, the plan is to have a condo association to 
maintain all that. Oh, Even so though we can individually sell them, they would be forced to have their pay into that association to maintain all the, mowings done the exterior and landscaping. Yeah. And so, Baird, are you okay if we include the uh, requirement for the HOA in the in yeah. the? Well, it would not be an HOA. It would be condo. a condo association. So we would. What would we call that, Hamp? I would just say if we do if we do turn into condos, we have to have that. We do. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I see. The the only you know we're rezoning it for RM3. If we go the the condo route, which is my wish, that would be required. I don't want to back myself into I, a corner to where. You know, if plans change down the road and we don't go a condo route, I'd still like to be able to develop it with See, those. I wasn't units. aware that it was a requirement. Okay, so okay. so let me ask you this, Barrett: If are they going to be firewalled where you could sell them off as as one or twos? Or? It would be you could sell one individual unit. So so, would you, could, so you wouldn't have to sell the whole building. Correct. I could okay. sell a okay. three bedroom, two and a half bath right. with a garage, pretty much. I, I I think as long as we put in there that they all look uniformed. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll add to uh, DPC number three. This set units will be developed with. Is it compatible exteriors? I would say uniformed. Uniform. Uniform is Uniform better. exterior facades and roof color. Yes. The only thing I would like to have flexibility on would be if we're doing eight eight units, would say eight condos in one building. We may have multiple brick colors you see what I'm saying to where they're but every building would still look the same does that make sense um, so say for every third one it might have a different correct different yes, to where people who purchase these whether they're an owner or whether it's a property you know whether it's an investor that wants to rent it out or whatever um, we've got some um, some character to them and right. there's some some differences it's not but so you would cooking. carry that uniformity into the other units as well correct yes okay very good i think old yep. stone did like that if i'm not mistaken uniform. yeah uh, traditions has some units like that yeah they change the brick just yeah as long as whatever that pattern is as long as you do that on each building with, with, with yeah each i mean building. yeah it, you can take your eight units and you can design it to have different patterns on the eight but as long as all eight buildings look the same with the same kind of patterns exactly. no, okay that's I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Making your job difficult, Ham. We got Mr. Moore. I want to be sure. This will be developed with uniform exterior facades and roof color. There's somebody back here who's raising her hand. Is she? Just, just a minute, please, ma'am. Let, let us finish this. Okay. So let, let, let me ask, let me ask. So. You're doing it as a condo association in the beginning. You're setting it up that way, correct? You might not sell them off, but you are setting it up that way, correct? If we go down that, that road and sell them individually, yes. If we don't sell them individually, then uh, they would, the consistency would still be there. How do we, how do we protect ourselves from, from an HO? From, where from, you're going. from if you decide not to sell them off and decide to keep all 85 units or whatever the number, is how do we how do we make sure that they're all being maintained that's a great question and that's what i want i want the so it, so can we can we uniform. put can we put in their hemp that if if it is not set up and sold off as condos that the hoa would be in place or, or the single management yeah. single management would do it also i mean okay. you'd have the you'd have the ability to have the single management or if you started selling units it would go by the condo docs absolutely yeah so this would be a con uh, condominium association. There right. will be. There will also be formed a condominium association or similar entity to enforce and maintain the DPCs. Yes. Yeah, so I don't like that. Okay. Kevin, come to the microphone. It's on. What I, what I would want to say is because these are going to be developed and built so that they are capable of being divided into condos, but he doesn't know. And he may take one group and he would sell those eight and maybe not all of them. And so I understand the interest we've had uh, in recent years about um, single management. And so may, what I would suggest would be to the extent these are rental units, 
I don't even know if this works. It would be under single management. Yeah, couldn't we just put single management in? Because even Barrett, even if they were going to be sold off as condos, there would still have to be a single management to hold to, to handle it for the condo association. We, we could we could say that common areas will be uh, managed by a single entity. That's fine. Yeah. Without saying I think that's the, that I it's think that's the concern. Not the proper like you know not collecting. At, no, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I, it's the common areas. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you could I do think it. Either, either form of ownership, yeah. that would be what he would want. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all we're looking for. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a question. Barrett, what, what is the uh, proposed development plan? Will it be phases? Will it, uh, oh. will you develop so many at different periods of time? Or well, the, the idea is to develop those as, as quick as possible, but right. we probably will not start every building at the same time. We would probably start on the Plano Road front two buildings, but I mean, phasing it out, I don't have that ironed out yet. So, okay. okay, yeah. Thank you. Mr. any other questions for Mr. Hammer or Mr. Brooks? We're all in agreement, but I've, I, I wanna ask uh, Hamp to tell me one more time what he has. Hey, hey, Barrett, come back up here so you can agree to these. Development will be managed by a single entity for enforcement of the DPCs. So what I would like to say in, in, in lieu of that is that common areas in the property will be managed by a single entity. You'd like to substitute the word development by, to, with common areas, correct? Rachel, pull your... I don't think it necessarily needs to reference um, the last part you said about for enforcement of the development plan conditions, because that's just something that our office would do anyway. Yeah. So if I'm understanding you correctly, you're just trying to clarify that common areas will be maintained by a single entity. It's no matter how many people own, you know, they could, we could have multiple owners, but we want this to be maintained and be uniform, correct? Yeah. Absolutely, with no matter how many people end up there. So. Yeah. And I guess we could talk later, and I could talk to you guys, but that uh, might well find itself just in a set of restrictive covenants or on the flag to be sure that it's there. Uh, I mean, I know that it's here. Okay. So, do we have do we have a DPC here? Gonna put it in the DPCs. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. <coughs> so, Mr. Hammer, you them. you agree to these? Is that correct? <coughs> okay. Very good. All right. That's nice. it. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that has questions or would like to make a comment? Yes, ma'am. If you would state your name and your address, please. Uh, my name is Saida Clay, and I'm living at 791 Lily Street in the Magnolia Hills neighborhood, right behind a proposed development. And um, Would you, do you swear to tell the truth? I swear to tell the truth. I'm yes, sorry, I'm a little nervous. Not very good at public speaking. Um, so I am here to um, propose you not approve that, <laughs> um, since I, I'm. I want you to guys look at, at Plain Road and uh, consider to not approve that because um, it's, it's narrow, it's hilly, um, it's a no pass uh, road. So when it's mailman is there, you know, it's all getting backed up. The um, Magnolia Hills neighborhood, it's a halfway finished but it's still gonna be a, a lot of houses there. So it's gonna be a lot of cars coming through into that, into that road. Um, there is a four already apartment buildings that's already built that is gonna add more uh, people and more cars into that uh, portion of that Plano Road. And with you adding uh, this um, condominium apartment buildings, it's eight of them, it's uh, eight, 80 of them, it's 160 more cars you add into that little stretch of Plano Road. Um, there is 
as I say already, there is no um, no turn lanes. So if you if city, you know, consider to approve that, the the, the planner road have to have the turn lane, middle turn lane, uh, the right turn lanes. The, that that road is not designed to have that many uh, that much traffic. There is also if you add in all this neighborhood. First of all, neighborhood already they are getting. Uh, Half of it is already done for other apartment buildings there. It's more apartment building on the other side, and there is no sidewalk, anything like that. So I, in, my, in my opinion, in opinion of others, that it's a very dangerous stretch of road that it's not need to add anything else to it. All right, thank you very much. So we've heard a comment tonight about uh, this proposed uh, amendment, uh, the traffic on Plano Road. Is there anyone else here tonight that has a comment or a question regarding this uh, proposed development? Okay, hearing none, would uh, any other qu commissioners, any other questions? So just to sufficiently ad address uh, this this uh, question, uh, this is a question for staff. Uh, the, the, uh, th there wasn't a requirement for additional uh, anything additional with regard to roads here, correct, from the traffic engineers? That's correct. Um, KYTC uh, would have reviewed this preliminarily during our uh, comprehensive development review prior to the application, and they didn't, uh, they didn't find that there were any improvements necessary to support this development. So the engineers are telling us we, we, we've got sufficient capacity then? All right, very good, thank you. Thank you. All right, commissioners, any other comments? Uh, no other comments from the audience. Hearing none, we call for a motion, please. Make a motion to approve the, the proposed zoning map amendment together with condition upon the general development plan, docket number 202320ZBG. Based upon the testimony and documents presented in the public hearing, the proposed zoning map amendment is consistent with the adopted focus 2030 comprehensive plan as demonstrated by its compliance with the objectives and action items presented in the staff report. Therefore, the proposed zoning map amendment is in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. Further, I request that this motion include a summary of evidence and testimony presented by the witnesses at this public hearing. Commissioner Graham. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Shaw. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Starks. Yes. Commissioner Vitale. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volker. Yes, ma'am. Chair Warren. Yes, ma'am. The motion is approved and goes to the Bowling Green City Commission for final approval. Our next item tonight is 2023-22Z County. Thomas J. and Georgia R. Blevins have filed an application to rezone tracts of land containing approximately 11.1 acres located at 1205 Matlock Road and Zero Long Road from agriculture to RE Residential State and RS1B Single Family Residential with the General Development Plan. Jane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We had a pre-application meeting in February of this year for the property outlined in yellow. The current zoning of the property is ag. The current land use is single family residential and agriculture. And the future land use designation is low density residential. There is a site plan for your all's consideration. The applicants are proposing to rezone the properties at Zero Long Road and 1205 Matlock Road from ag to RE and RS1B in order to develop a maximum of four RE lots and nine RS1B lots. If approved, the proposed RS1B lots will become part of the existing Blevins Farm subdivision. That is all that staff have. Looking down uh, to the staff recommendation, uh, the proposal does comply with the majority of the criteria assessed in the review process and is generally compatible with the surrounding area. The staff recommend approval for this application pending public hearing testimony and discussion tonight. I'm happy to answer any, any of your all's questions. Commissioners, any questions uh, for this, uh, for Jenny, please? All right, hearing none. Is the applicant here or their representative? Any comments, Dr. Blevins? I'm T.J. Blevins, uh, 1205 Matlock Road, and I swear to tell the truth. Thank you, Dr. Blevins. Um, this is the last of the Blevins Farm, 60 acres that, that we started, 
and I've been very pleased with how it's uh, developed and, and uh, Jago uh, has built all the houses so far. This side, what I'm doing is finishing this side of Hopkins Avenue, which was the new street that we uh, put in there. And there will be nine lots that will face Hopkins Avenue, and we already have, you know, everything is, is there for that. Also, it'll match up with the way uh, that cars were, will uh, leave. They don't uh, come out on two Long Road. They, those two houses that are down at, uh, on, when you come out from, from Hopkins Avenue, you will not come out on, onto Matlock. So it, it keeps things uh, from, there's not a lot of cars coming in where those stop signs are is what I'm trying to say. Um, the one, um, our barn and uh, the big barn where the horses are and our house will remain the same. Our daughter's gonna build a house on the south side of our house. And then um, the thing that, that we learned was the roundabout, which sounds like that will be just the beautiful. Uh, we never knew how it would all turn out with Carter Sims. Did he talk to me again? No, I'm flipping it over for Okay. Um, but the roundabout is proposed, and it mainly takes up part of the smaller barn and a good portion, well, it takes all of my corner, of course, to do it, but it'll make the transition coming over the hill on Carter Sims down, down to Matlock and then on to the um, uh, Three Springs Road and Long Road. So everything's turned out pretty so far, and I think this will just be the icing on the cake to Thank you, Doc, like. thank you, Dr. Blevins. Uh, anything else to add? No, sir. Commissioners, before you sit down, Dr. Blevins, any questions? Thank you all for being here tonight. Is there anyone in the audience that has a question or a opposition to this uh, request? Yes, sir. Downing, 382 Long Road, I promise to tell the truth. I don't, I'm not opposed to this, I just have a question on lights 10 and 11 that face Long Road. I didn't see in the binding elements, and it could be in there, what size houses are those required? All I could find was 1,800, and I know in the old subdivision, it's 22 that face. So I, I, I didn't know, so. DPC number four says 2,200 square feet. It's on the E, on the, right on that one. I'm talking about the R, what is it, RS1B? They the two. I just didn't see it in there. 1800 is proposed. It comes behind that. I was just curious on the square footage of those two houses. That on the old subdivision, all the face long and Matlock have to be 2200, correct? In the old one. So I was just wondering if they would be the same. <coughs> So is he correct in that statement? Those for the two lots, it is 2,200. Is that correct or no? For the, for the two uh, green lots on the corner, the larger lots, the minimum proposed is 2,200. But the I'm blue, about the, the two blue the lots, blue. yeah, I'm talking the, about two blue ones. The blue lots that are at the corner of Hopkins Street, the proposed home size and their development plan conditions is 1,800. I just wonder if it was going to be the could be the same. Dr. Levins, would you come up to the microphone? This is this is recorded, so we can hear you. Uh, there are two new houses on the, uh, which would be the the west side um, of the street, and they're the what whatever we have. I think it was eighteen hundred square feet on on both of those those two. Um, but it would just match up exactly both sides of the road now. And then 
across from where his dad's house is will be the 2200 square foot house. And then, then the one that faces Matlock would be a 2200 square foot. I thought in the old one, all houses that faced both roads had to be 2200. In the original, that's what it says in the. I'm, I'm looking right now. <clears throat> Down. I can't remember anything anymore. Yeah, you look on page two of the, I don't know what you call this. It says in the old one, everything that faced the road had to be 2200. It does say that each residence fronting Matlock and Long Road shall have a minimum of 2,200 square feet. And then each of the interior residences shall have a minimum of 1,800 square feet. So that we so, need to so, change two of them to make it yeah, it, Yes, yeah. it would be the... That's my only question. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. And then Rodney, can I ask Rodney? Yeah. Um, yes. Rodney McGee, uh, 2053 Dyford Road, Square Hill Street. Thank you. Yes. On the, uh, the 2,200 square feet, you, is that what those other two houses are? I can't say exactly what they are, uh, the two houses that are there now. I'm sure that they would have been reviewed. Uh, if that's what the development plan conditions state, then when they apply for those building permits, they would have reviewed it. So okay. if you're okay with changing I'm okay. those two lots. I'm okay yeah. with changing that, the 2200 on them, the ones that face, they actually face um, Long Road. Long Road. Yeah. Yeah. And that's across from his dad's. Okay. Should we give Mr. Moore a, a second here to formulate the, uh, the DPC change and let them agree to that? Eighteen hundred to twenty-two. No, it only needs to be two lots. Those two. Ten, ten, eleven, isn't it? Evans, um, I'm looking at the deep the development plan condition for the RS1B portion, and we're going to change DPC number three to read this way. And I want you to express either your agreement or disagreement with this new amendment. Each residence will have a minimum of 1,800 square feet of heated living space, exclusive of garages and portions with the exception of lots 10 and 11, which will have a minimum of 2,200 square feet of heated living space exclusive of garages and porches. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Downey, you. Dr. Blevins. Commissioners, any other questions uh, regarding these changes or this proposal? All right, is there anyone in the audience tonight that has a question or in opposition to this request? All right, hearing none, we call for a motion, please. Make the motion to approve the proposed zoning map amendment together with and condition upon the general development plan docket number 2023-22ZCO. Based on the testimony and documents presented at the public hearing, the proposed zoning map amendment is consistent with the adopted focus 2030 comprehensive plan as demonstrated by its compliance with the objectives and action items presented at the staff report. Therefore, the proposed zoning map amendment is in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. Further, I request this motion to include the summary of evidence and testimony presented by the witnesses at this public hearing. Second. Second. Commissioner Volker. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Graham. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Shaw. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Starks. Yes. Commissioner Vitale. Yes, and Chair Warren. Yes, ma'am. The motion is approved and goes to Warren County Physical Court for final approval. Our next item tonight uh, is 2023-23-23-Z uh, County. Sandra Duval has filed an application to rezone tracts of land containing approximately 27.99 acres located 0 and 886 Gherkin Road from Ag and RE Residential State to RE Residential State with the General Development Plan. Commissioners at your desk tonight 
you have a uh, you have a set of new development plan conditions. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so those uh, development plan conditions were submitted to us this morning, so we wanted to pass those along to you. Um, we had a pre-application meeting on February 22nd of this year for the property that you mentioned and is highlighted in yellow. The current zoning is uh, ag and RE. The current land use is agriculture and vacant. And the future land use is rural density, density residential. Um, the applicant uh, has provided a site plan uh, on page 12 for your reference. And uh, again, the applicants are looking uh, to rezone uh, from agriculture in RE to RE in order to develop a maximum of 24 single family residential lots. So looking down at the bottom of the page, uh, to staff recommendation, um, we'll jump ahead to uh, the, the second bullet point there. So with the, um, with the submittal of the new development plan conditions, uh, that uh, has uh, addressed any of the staff concerns that were mentioned there in the bullet point number two. Uh, so we can uh, kind of re remove that um, concern there. So the proposal complies with the majority of the criteria assessed in the review process and is generally compatible with the surrounding area. So with that, staff recommends approval uh, pending public hearing testimony and uh, the discussion here at the hearing. So that is all we have for a staff report. Be happy to answer any questions. Uh, so on um, the new development plan conditions number three, they did not, they, uh, uh, the two stories, there's no uh, minimum of what is modern masonry materials. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So for clarity, um, they are specifying the front facade B, masonry materials. Okay. And then staying with number three, it says the foundation shall not include, uh, shall include no visible plain face or split face block. Is there any other alternative other than brick veneer? And, and, and if, so, if not, could we just go ahead and, and state that? Yes, does the applicant need to? That, that may be a question yeah, for the applicant. For, I, I yeah, don't know if they have they, any other creative yeah. plan up their right, sleeve. Sorry, I don't, but. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. No. Commissioners, any other questions for Amy? Thank you very much. Is the applicant here or the representative? Good evening, Chair Warner, Warren, uh, members of the commission. Chris Davenport, 921 College Street. And I swear to tell the truth. We will add to number three and Shelby brick veneer. I think that will address Commissioner Graham's question there. Uh, just to highlight the five changes that we made, some of which were kind of ministerial, one of which was requested by a neighbor. Um, we added to number two that the home served by internal streets would be oriented to face internal streets. Um, kind of makes common sense, but the staff suggests we put that in there, so we've done that. On number six, a, a more substantive change was that uh, we increased the square footage to 1,700 square feet for each home. The staff uh, report noted that was the median square footage in the surrounding area, so we moved that up to match it, and we increased our attached garage number from one to two. Both of those are in number six. Then in number nine, we added the standard sinkhole mitigation or, pre, or uh, protection language. And in 10, this was requested by one of the neighbors. There's a neighbor, uh, if we're looking at the, at the zoning exhibit, the very bottom adjoining property is owned by uh, Mrs. Wingate. There's a fence row along that property line and she requested that we maintain the vegetation within 10 feet of it. So that was the reason for the DPC number 10 from a phone call I got yesterday. So um, Mrs. Duvall's son, Josh, is here. I think staff, did y'all get the power of attorney that we emailed? So he's here to swear to these changes. I don't have anything to add besides that. I think uh, with those changes, we've addressed every comment that the staff had uh, for points of consideration. Yes, Chair. So uh, Chris, on point number three, uh, so the exterior would be modern materials. The sides will be what? 
the, the, the plan is, in likelihood, the fronts will be that modern masonry, the other three sides will be vinyl siding. Really now, I, I, I say really that's the plan. I'm not sure. Mr. Duval does, is not even sure yet whether he will develop this himself. So obviously that decision is left for the builder, but the DPC would allow for that. I would, I would just simply say, and I know that's a concern of the commission very, very often. Uh, if you look at the staff report, they've given you the, the materials in the neighborhood. And I would note that of their points of consideration, they included the vinyl siding actually wasn't one of them. I think initially we asked for all vinyl, uh, the possibility. We changed that to include the front facades prior to the staff report being written. But, uh, Rachel, I'm uh, looking at this correctly, that 70% of all the homes in the area are non-vinyl. Am I reading that correctly? Yes, you are reading that correctly. Um, in this area, uh, homes that were built uh, probably back in the 70s, 80s, uh, those are mainly brick. Yeah. And then the newer homes that have been constructed probably in the last five or 10 years, those are primarily 100% uh, vinyl exteriors. So there's a, a mix. And I, it would be fair to say that in this specific section of Gherkin Road that most homes that are immediately, I guess, to the north and west are primarily vinyl. And, and I will say this, I think they have a difficult job when they try to quantify that because one note in their staff report is, even of those homes that are brick, vinyl is used as an access. And I don't know if that means in gables, you know, it could be different things on different homes. So, uh, you know, it's truly a mixed bag. I think the staff report even mentions there's still wood-sided homes and even aluminum-sided homes in this area, which we don't, we don't see too often. But uh, I, I would just say on the applicant's part, we felt like uh, putting the stone veneers on the front and then increasing the garages to two, uh, increasing the square footage, those are concessions I think will make the neighborhood look better too. <clears throat> the, I, I always feel like the additional garage and the parking can go a long way to how the neighborhood looks. Rick, put your microphone down. It appears you and the applicant have mitigated some of the concerns that so we, the we commission tried. has. He, he yeah. tried. Thank you for doing that. Commissioners, any other questions for uh, Mr. Davenport? All right. Thank you, Chris. Have Mr. Duval come up and, and swear to those changes, Chair. Uh, the cha oh, that's right. The new. Yes, I'm sorry, the new development plan uh, conditions. Yes, sir, if you'd state your name and address, please, sir. Uh, Josh Duval, 208 Reynolds Court, Oakland, Kentucky. All swear right, to swear to tell the truth. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Duval, did you hear those changes that we've made? Yes, sir. I'm going to briefly highlight those, okay, that we're going to home served by internal streets will be oriented to face those streets, right. that all foundations shall have a brick veneer on them. Correct that the minimum square footage of the homes would be 1,700 square feet and they'll have at least a two car attached garage that we're gonna either mitigate uh, or protect uh, sinkholes found on the property and we're gonna pr maintain the vegetation within 10 feet of that property line with Mrs. Wingfield. Do you agree to all those? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone in the audience tonight that has a question or an opposition to this request? Yes, ma'am, if you come to the microphone, please. Sure. Yes, ma'am, if you would state your name and your address, please. My name is Kitty Woodard. I live at 900 Gherkin Road. All right, Miss uh, Woodard, you swear, uh, to, tell swear the truth. to tell the truth. Thank yes, you sir. very much. Um, my question is not, we just, my mother and I just bought our home two years ago bought it in the country, we thought, and now we're going to have a development right next door. We are not opposed to growth in our community. What we are concerned with is how much planning is being done about the watershed that runs across the back side of this property. Also, and it is a watershed because we had county water come out and talk to us about the water that can back up across the back side of this property. Uh, of our property, which goes across the proposed uh, zoning change. 
we also have a concern with this much volume of homes coming into this area. Is there going to be any required fire hydrants, uh, sewer? Uh, that many homes also means septic if it's not on sewer. And that also will be a very concern to all of us that live on this road. Um, you've got that much volume and we're not that far from the roundabout where there's going to be more development, I understand. So we're concerned not so much, uh, we want the quality and the property value, value of our homes not to d go down because again, we have moved into this area to be in a quiet neighborhood. We moved from Nashville from a large subdivision. We moved to the country, like I said, so if you will take those things and consider, this is fire, this is also about police. Um, you got that many people coming in and we've got more development, I understand, out behind us or, or all around us. And that much development means money and services. So we would like for you all to keep that in mind while you're making these decisions. Again, we're not opposing development. We just want to be planned development. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so to answer the question on the water is before building permits are, are, are given out, and the engineers will make sure that they are, the water that's supposed to stay on their property will stay on their property. Okay? So that will have to be done. Um, so her, her, also, her other two questions were uh, traffic and the uh, fire hydrants. Staff, would you? Fire hydrants and sewer, I think, were the other well, two. So there was a question about fire hydrants, and there is a fire protection ordinance in Warren County. Um, there's certain spacing between hydrants that would be reviewed before the development could occur, and proper fire hydrants would have to be installed in accordance with that fire protection ordinance. There's no sewer available in this area, so all of the proposed homes would be served by a single on-site septic system, and those would have to be reviewed and approved through the Barron River District Health Department. Um, and then what was the other question, Chair Warren? Uh, the, just, it was a what if, uh, the uh, police, but they just serve. This would be Warren County Sheriff. Right. Uh, Right. And so to more explicitly uh, um, address uh, Ms. Woodard's concern, uh, the, the county ordinance is uh, for if, it, if there's no sewer available, they have to do a larger lot size. Is that correct? The uh, minimum lot size for a septic uh, system would have to be one acre. The reason it's one acre is to accommodate a septic system, a leach field, et cetera, on the site. If they had sewer, they could do a smaller lot size, correct? Correct. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Anyone else in the audience tonight that has uh, questions regarding this uh, proposed amendment? All right, hearing none, we call. Oh, excuse me. Come on. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yes. Moore, right. that was earlier with huh? Mr. Moore. I was with Beth Moore. I got here too late. All right, pull, pull the mic down. And I'm sorry, your name and address, Beth, please. Mary Beth Moore, and 807 Gherkin Road. Okay, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments you have other than the water? I just came in to tell in here about what the homes would be made of. I know my son had come a few months ago, and they had told him strictly hardy board, but could have a little bit of of um, vinyl siding, but that's what I was wondering what exactly, I just the, came in are, on the tail end of that. The, these will have, um, the, the front facades will be brick or stone or hardy board, and then the other three sides would, could be vinyl. I thought you said, but I want to double check. That's okay. it. All right, thank, thank you, you ma'am. Mm -hmm. All right, excuse me, I apologize, I didn't see your hand back. Anybody else uh, question or opposition this request? All right, hearing none, uh, commissioners would call for a motion, please. Make a motion to approve the proposed zoning map amendment together with and conditioned upon the general development plan, docket number 2023-23Z County. Based upon the testimony and documents presented in this public hearing, the proposed zoning map amendment is consistent with the adopted focus 2030 comprehensive plan as demonstrated by its compliance with the objectives and action items presented in the staff report. 
Therefore, the proposed zoning map amendment is in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. Further, I request that this motion include a summary of evidence and testimony presented by the witnesses at this public hearing. Second. Commissioner Graham. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Shaw. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Starks. Yes. Commissioner Vitale. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volker. Yes, ma'am. Chair Warren. Yes, ma'am. The motion is approved and goes to Warren County Fiscal Court for final approval. Our next item tonight is 2023-24 Z County. Stephanie and Thomas Malzerati, the applicants, and Kelly and Shirley Roberts have filed an application to rezone a portion of a tract of land containing approximately 1.45 acres located at 2177 Woodburn Allen Springs Road from Ag to RE Residential Estate with a general development plan. Amy? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We had a pre-application meeting uh, November the 28th of last year for the property that you mentioned and that is highlighted in yellow. Current zoning is agriculture. Uh, current land use is agriculture. And the future land use is agriculture. Uh, there is a site plan on pages uh, 10 and 11 for your uh, reference. And uh, uh, again, the applicants are proposing to rezone 1.45 acres located on a portion of the property at 2177 Woodburn Allen Springs Road uh, from agriculture to RE uh, in order to create an additional building lot. Uh, looking down at the bottom of the page, uh, the proposal complies with the majority of the criteria assessed in the review process and is generally compatible with the surrounding area. Therefore, uh, staff recommendation is approval uh, pending the public hearing testimony and uh, any further discussion. So that is all we have for staff report, but can answer any questions. Commissioners, any questions for this item tonight? All right, thank you, Amy. All right, is the applicant here any comments they would like to make? Yes, sir, your name and address, please, sir. Kelly Roberts, 2177 Woodburn Allen Springs Road, and I swear to tell the truth. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Um, about four years ago, we cut off some land for my son to build a house on our farm, and now my daughter and son-in-law have retired from the military, and they want to move here. Um, they want to build on our farm also, so on the other side, we're going to cut off a little land for them. Uh, she is currently a teacher in the school system, county school system, and he's going to eventually get into the ROTC teaching now that he's retired major in the Army. Well, thank you, Mr. Roberts. It sounds like a good plan. It's a compound <laughs> right. with grandkids and dogs and everything. All right. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions for Mr. Roberts? Mr. Roberts, in the pools open, yeah. opened up a couple of days ago. Mr. Roberts, in the development plan condition number two, um, uh, I think I understand fully what your intent here is, but I want to make sure that I, I'd like to clarify this just sure. a little bit. Um, it, it says explo exposed plain face and split face block are prohibited. Uh, do you have any objection to, to having us just explicitly say that it would be a brick veneer foundation? That's fine with me. All right. And I'll, I'll, uh, Mr. Mr. Moore will, will do, uh, uh, will wordsmith that and, and make us look like we knew what we were doing when we said that. And the last name of my son-in-law is Malazarte. I'm sorry. Say it's okay. Place. It's hard to pick. It took me years. Malazark? Malazarte. Right. Did, did the best you <laughs> could. All right. Thank you. Did, you did great. All right. Uh, do you agree to uh, this development plan commission condition? Excuse me. Yes, I do. I'm sorry. Yes. All right. And that'll be at the end of uh, DPC number two. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Thank you all. Is there anyone in the audience tonight has a uh, question or opposition to this request? Hearing none, we call for a motion, please. Make the motion to approve the proposed zoning map amendment together with and condition upon the general development plan docket number 2023-24-ZCO. Based on the testimony and documents presented at the public hearing, the proposed zoning map amendment is consistent with the adopted focus 2030 comprehensive plan as demonstrated by its compliance with the objective and action items presented at the staff report. Therefore, the proposed zone, zoning map amendment is in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. Further, I request this motion include the summary of evidence and the testimony presented by the witnesses at this public hearing. Second. Commissioner Volker. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Chair Shaw. Yes, ma'am. 
Commissioner Starks? Yes. Commissioner Vitale? Yes, ma'am. And Chair Warren? Yes, ma'am. The motion is approved and goes to Warren County Fiscal Court for final approval. Our next item tonight is 2023-25Z County, S-O-C-A-Y-R Incorporated. The applicants and Jeffrey Moore, the property owner, have filed an application to rezone a tract of land containing approximately 16.49 acres located at 0 Morgantown Road from RS-1A single family residential and F floodplain to RM4 multifamily residential and floodplain with a general development plan. Sir. Thank you, Chair Warren. We had a pre-application meeting back in February for the property you just described located on Morgantown Road. The current zoning is RS1A, and you can see the rear portion of the property is also located in the floodplain. The current land use is agriculture, and the future land use map is split, uh, partially commercial, mixed-use commercial, and then parks and open space. Uh, that would be the area in the floodplain. <coughs> the applicants are proposing to rezone the property to RM4 in order to build a maximum of 225 multifamily units on the property. And this is the preliminary development plan that was submitted with the rezoning application. Looking at compatibility with the comprehensive plan, staff found the application to be generally compatible and in compliance with the applicable review criteria from the Focus 2030 comprehensive plan. And so therefore our recommendation uh, is for approval and that would be pending the public hearing testimony and any discussion during the public hearing th this evening. That is all I have for the staff report, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Rachel, was there much talk with the applicant about, do I read this correctly, that up to 50% of it can be vinyl? That's correct. Uh, we didn't ask them to change that. There are buildings, multifamily buildings, within view of this property that are almost 100% vinyl exterior. They're multi multifamily. So in our review of the uh, surrounding building materials, we felt that that was consistent. So, and Rachel, am, am I overlooking it? Do we, um, do we have an HOA and, and uniform um, uh, exterior? Uh, or did you, were there any discussions about those things? I don't, I don't remember. It says it in, in, in number two that ownership will be by a single entity and management by a single entity. All right, okay, very good, thank you. You'll have to forgive me with nine applications, they're all running no, together. No, no, no. <laughs> I think that addresses it. Yeah, it does, it does. I just overlooked it. Uniform design and color scheme. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions for Rachel? All right, thank you very much. Is the applicant here? Or the representative, any comments you would like to make? We are here. We have nothing to add. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Uh, is there anyone in the audience tonight that has a question or an opposition to this request? Okay. Hearing none, we call for a motion, please. Make the motion to approve the proposed zoning map amendment together with and condition upon the general development plan docket number 2023-25Z County. Based upon the testimony and documents presented in this public hearing, the proposed zoning map amendment is consistent with the adopted Focus 2030 comprehensive plan as demonstrated by its compliance with the objectives and action items presented in the staff report. Therefore, the proposed zoning map amendment is in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. Further, I request that this motion include the summary of evidence and testimony presented by the witnesses at this public hearing. Second. Parks. Yes. Chair Vitale. Yes, Commissioner Volker. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Graham. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Shaw. Yes, ma'am. And Chair Warren. Yes, ma'am. The motion is approved and goes to Warren County Fiscal Court uh, for final approval. Two more items tonight. Jose M. Uh, Valdeva Rodriguez and Elizabeth Valdez Aranda, I hope I, please forgive me if I've mispronounced the name, have filed an application to rezone a track of land taking, containing approximately 1.45 acres located at 40, 4526 Highway 185 from RE Residential State to General Business with a General Development Plan. All ready for the staff report? Okay. We're ready. Okay. 
let me get switched over here. We had a pre-application meeting back in February uh, for the property at 4526 Kentucky Highway 185. Current zoning is RE and the land use is also single family residential. Future land use is actually industrial and you may be curious about this. Some of you may have been here uh, back in 2021 when the Planning Commission approved a future land use map amendment for this property. Looking at the preliminary development plan, uh, the applicants are proposing to rezone the property to general business in order to construct a 4,000 square foot building for a wood flooring business. There's also a second 800 square foot building that is proposed that will serve as a maintenance and storage building uh, to support the flooring business. And then the existing home that is located on the property is proposed to remain and will be repurposed as an office. Looking at compatibility with the comprehensive plan, staff found the proposal to be generally in compliance with considerations noted regarding parking, hours of operation, and signage. Um, I'm going to touch on those three items quickly. Um, first, looking at page two, uh, the parking, uh, when we reviewed the proposal, there are eight parking spaces proposed. Uh, the parking is based off of the number of employees at maximum shift, plus the office space area. And so the office would require three spaces, and then uh, that would leave five spaces for employees, assuming that the maximum shift would be no greater than that. Um, but we did not receive confirmation of that number from the applicants, so that is one of our points to consider. Also looking at business hours of operation, uh, the proposal is from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., and uh, we've noted that during the pre-application meeting that uh, the staff discussed with the applicants that they had stated that hours of operation would not begin until 7 a.m. And then touching on signage at the bottom of page three, um, we have noted that freestanding signage does not currently exist along Old Kentucky Highway, sorry, Old Kentucky 185 loop number two. And during the pre-application meeting, wall signage was discussed along with eliminating a freestanding sign altogether or limiting the height and square footage to something of a neighborhood scale. However, the applicants are not proposed However, the applicants are proposing freestanding signage up to 20 feet tall with a maximum sign face area of 100 square feet. This is not consistent with signage in the area. And the applicants also did not specify the style of freestanding signage planned. Uh, for example, if it would be a pole sign or a monument style sign. Uh, but they did agree that freestanding signage would be externally illuminated only. Um, so those are our uh, considerations uh, for your review. Uh, but other than that, uh, the staff recommendation is for approval pending the public hearing testimony and any further discussion this evening. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, commissioners, any questions? So Rachel, in the aerial, uh, I guess it's to the south, uh, there is a property there that has a lot of vehicles parked outside. What, what, what type of business is that? Uh, that property, if we go back to the zoning map, it's actually zoned, I believe, Commercial or heavy industrial? I can't see that far. Is it HI? Uh, or are you ta you're talking about the property that's caddy corner? I'm going the wrong way. You're talking about this property here or this one or both? Oops. One, uh, there you go, there. Yeah. See all those vehicles outside there? That, that business has been there for years. It's legal non-conforming. Uh -huh. It's essentially uh -huh. grandfathered in. Okay. Um, that type of use today would require industrial zoning. There's specific screening requirements that would come into play, but like I said, that business has been there for a very long time. Let's see, and um, one of your um, uh, topics to consider was parking. Um, would, I assume this type of parking is not what we're referring to. Uh, we're looking for parking spaces, is that yes. correct? Right, so you can see on the site plan, they've allocated eight parking spaces. Mm -hmm. And so we had just uh, asked a question of the applicants as to how many employees they would be having with the flooring business, just to ensure that eight spaces would be sufficient for that. But we never received confirmation of that number. Very good, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Rachel. Is the applicant here or their representative? Okay. Your clients aren't here. Okay. So, Mr. Moore, if the 
if you zoning the zoning ordinance uh, requires that the applicants appear for the public hearing and um, I think the reason for that is some of the issues that have already come up about commitments that need to be made tonight so it, uh, it's in your discretion uh, as to whether or not you can proceed with the hearing um, <clears throat> I would say we do not proceed since the applicant is not here Well, just, just a minute, sir. Since the applicant is not here, let, let us finish this. And so the applicant's not here, so we would. Uh, oh, would we just not deny it and then let them resubmit? Would it be a table? Be, wouldn't it be postponed? What you, what you have done in the past is just uh, uh, view the lack, the, the fact that the applicant is not here uh, as a withdrawal. Okay. Um, or an alternative would be to simply recess the hearing to another night um, and assuming that suits the applicant uh, you can proceed in that manner now, do either one of those do either one of those require the same people to be here do any of either of those two require that the six of us would be the only ones here to vote on it not, not unless you've heard some testimony and, and right. I don't don't see that we're going to going to do that. I I I make the motion that we would just withdraw it. Withdraw it. Same. All right. Just before we do that, sir, do you do you understand that this is this application? You're you're here with opposition or a question about it. This has been withdrawn. Okay, but it, this has been withdrawn. So it's it, we appreciate you being here tonight, but. Yes, yes, sir. Thank, sorry for your trouble, but thank you for being here tonight. So we'd have a motion to with, withdraw, correct? Yes. We, we need a motion, please. I made the motion to withdraw. I second it. Chair Volker. Yes, ma'am. Chair Graham. Yes, ma'am. Chair Shaw. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Starks. Yes. Commissioner Vitale. Yes. Chair Warren. All right. So the motion is withdrawn. <laughs> Our last item tonight is 2023-27Z County, Eastwood Baptist Church Incorporated, and Visick LLC, care of Mike Vitale, have filed an application to rezone a tract of land containing approximately nine-tenths of an acre located on a portion of the property at 944 Scottsville Road from RS1C, single-family residential, to OP, C office in professional commercial and rezone a tract of land containing approximately uh, 0.35 acres located on the uh, portion of the property at zero Sunflower Lane from office and professional to RS1 single family residential with a general development plan. That was a lot. We had a pre application meeting on March the 22nd of this year for the uh, property that you mentioned and then is highlighted in uh, yellow. Um, the uh, current zoning is RS1C and OPC. Current land use is public institutional and vacant. And the future land use is low density residential. Uh, the site plan can be found on page 10 of your packet. And uh, again, the purpose of this, of the application is to remove the split zoning that currently exists on the properties. Uh, if approved, both properties uh, will be bound by the binding elements that currently apply to the parent properties uh, and development. Uh, so looking down at the property history there at the very bottom, uh, the current zoning one uh, RS1C was uh, established in 2020, uh, if that looks familiar to you. Uh, and down at the very bottom, the proposal complies with the majority of the criteria assessed in the review process. And the proposal is generally compatible with the area and comprehensive plan. Since nothing is being proposed to change as a part of this application, other than removing the split zoning that currently exists on the properties. Uh, therefore, the staff recommendation is approval, uh, pending any, uh, pending the public hearing testimony and any discussion that might follow. So that is all we have for a staff report. Be happy to answer any questions. Commissioners, any questions? All right, thank you. Applicants here, anything y'all would like to add? All right, the property owners, anything you would like to add? They're good. All right, we'll call for motion, please. Motion to approve the 
Make the motion to approve the proposed zoning map amendment together with and contingent upon the general development plan docket number 2023-27-ZCO based on the testimony and documents presented at the public hearing. The proposed zoning map amendment is consistent with the adopted focus 2030 comprehensive plan as demonstrated by its compliance with the objective and ac action items presented in the staff report. Therefore, the proposed zone map amendment is in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. Further, I request this motion to include the summary of evidence and testimony presented by the witnesses at this public hearing. Second. Chair Volker. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Graham. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Shaw. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Starks. Yes. Commissioner Vitale. And Chair Warren. Yes, ma'am. The motion is approved and goes to the Warren County Fiscal Court for final approval. That was our last item for tonight. Any new business? We have no new business, uh, any other comments? So we will see everybody the first Thursday in May. All right, thank you all for being here tonight.